Let's face it, social media can be a massive waste of time if you go down the wrong rabbit hole. That's why in today's video, I'm gonna share with you the three social media marketing strategies I would recommend you avoid unless you wanna hurt your online health business. Hey guys, what's going on? You're Al King here, CEO and founder of Health for Real. We help health professionals and coaches build scalable coaching businesses that transform more lives. And you are here because you want to learn about social media marketing strategies, what to do, what not to do. And what I want to share in this video is a little bit more of what not to do and some of the mistakes to avoid based on my own experience of having been in business now for 20 years and obviously having helped thousands of health professionals and coaches build successful businesses online. So why are we talking? talking about this? Well, first and foremost, I think it's important to remember that content in the grand scheme, when I say content, I mean social media, organic content, it is really important. Like it's going to build trust with your audience. It's going to help build your brand. And in the long term is the best play. The challenge is that creating content is a massive endeavor. It's a very time intensive endeavor. And if it's not, if it's not done properly, you're essentially just creating stuff that no one's ever going to see. And you're going to see very little in return from. Now, I share this because when I started my first health business back in 2005 online, uh, it was large largely built on content. You know, we got our blog to 1.4 million visitors per month, uh, grew our YouTube channel to 300,000 subscribers, and we had a big machine around all that. And it was a huge endeavor. At one point, we had a payroll of $35,000 just for the social media and content side of things, right? Not even everything else in the business. So I share this with you because it's very easy to look at what other people are doing online and try to copy it or say, I have to do that and I have to have all this stuff or whatever. And the thing I want you to remember is like, there's no one size fits all approach. I have friends who have very successful social presences. And what's interesting is each one of them has a very different approach. Some people do great with video. Some people don't do video at all. Some people have minimal text on their stuff and they allow, you know, that to do its thing. And then, you know, others are more image based, right? And so you really want to kind of find your groove and understand that there's, you know, no one way of doing things. I think the most important thing is, and this is something we work a lot with our clients around, is helping them and helping you understand in this case to truly find your true voice. Because I believe that creating content is as much an art as it is a science. And part of the problem with building out uh, a content or social media leg of your business is that it's very easy to lose the art part of it. Now, if you only focus on the art and you don't focus on the science part, then you end up spending a lot of time creating content no one ever sees. On the flip side, if you focus a bit too much on the science side, when I say the science, I mean the metrics, the process, the workflows, that stuff, and you forget the art, then you're just putting a really bland content that doesn't connect with anyone. And this is actually uh, what recently happened with us. So w for context with Healthpreneur, we didn't do any content for the first three years of the business. We were focused on paid acquisition, but you know, I'm, 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 I love creating content as you may or may not know based on having seen some of our videos. So we started to build a bit of a division around this content marketing manager, you know, social media manager, blah, 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 all that stuff. And recently I just blew up the team. I said, this is not producing the results that we want. There's a lot of activity and a lot of people doing stuff in the kitchen and we're not delivering good food on the table. There's a lot of busy work for a small amount of output. You know, if you've seen my other videos, I talk a lot about leverage is what's the output relative to the input. In this case, it was almost like reverse leverage. Like we had a lot of input for a tiny little output and it just didn't make sense anymore. And so I kind of took back over ownership of this and I'll share actually uh, the exact process I use to create content toward the end of this video. So don't go anywhere, keep watching. And I realized like it's not about uh, having this convoluted, complicated process. It's really about finding the groove that's going to work best for you. So I, I think it's really, it is challenging to listen to a lot of the stuff online. Part of the problem we have nowadays is like we're overloaded with information and we're starving for wisdom. As an example, I was on a coaching call in the mastermind that I'm a part of uh, last week. And there were three different experts talking about their philosophy on content. And each one of them had a very different approach. They said, this is how you got to do it to grow in this year. This is what you got to do. And it's like, no, not really. I don't have to do that. I mean, I could, but I don't have to because for every, every person saying this is the only way, there's other people that are doing that. 
right? So my goal here is to just give you what I've seen to make sense, at least for me, and you know, take it or leave it for whatever you want to do with it. So I'm going to share three ideas here with you. So the first thing I want to talk about, like this three social marketing strategies that I think make sense to avoid, because if you do these without any thought, I think they will hurt your business based on having seen this happen in, in vivo, in our own business and some people they've worked with. So the first thing is, the first thing we want to avoid is an overemphasis on viral content or chasing likes, comments, views. So why, why does this fail? Why does this not make sense? Because number one, I think I don't think it's sustainable. I don't think it's a predictable way for long-term growth. And there's no like ethos to what you're creating. You're just jumping on the latest wave. And there's, there's no soul to what it is you stand for. And I think part of the beauty of creating content is finding your voice and really being able to articulate what you stand for and what you stand against. But when we're jumping on the latest trends, we're always just doing what we think is gonna get the most traction. And I, and I don't think it makes a lot of sense. Um, we have two clients recently who, sh who shared that they had uh, respectively in, in their own businesses, uh, a few posts over the past year that went viral. I'm talking about like hundreds of thousands of views on Instagram. And they said, I wish I could have taken it back. I wish I could have taken that post down before it went viral. And the reason they said that is because when something goes viral, it's shown to way more people than your select target audience. And that means now you have a lot of people in their case, they had a lot of people coming in to follow them on Instagram who are not engaged who are not their ideal prospects, and that actually killed the engagement on their Instagram profile temporarily. And so in some cases, actually one of them was trying to manually remove all these followers, but it was tens of thousands of people. And they, they're like, listen, like, whoa, what's the point, right? So going viral is not all it's cracked up to be. If the, if the ultimate goal is to be able to generate business from your social media content. The second thing I see with this is I've got four kids, uh, two of them, uh, as of the shooting, one's 13, one's 10, have YouTube channels. And they're kind of finding their way, right? They aren't, you know, it's a little bit of gaming, it's a little bit of whatever. They focus more on shorts, and this is very interesting. They don't really do long-form content yet, which I think is, you know, I'm like, hey man, you know, consider doing some long-form because what my kids do is they watch the Mr. Beasts, they watch all these guys that have hundreds of millions of views, and, you know, a lot of it's like Fortnite, Minecraft, whatever, and they're jumping on these little trends. So my son, you know, just added 300 new subscribers in a day. So I'm like, huh, how'd you do that? Like, let's have a look at the video. And the video was so like, I'm like, number one, I don't even, I, I would not have known that he created it. It was just trend jacking on someone or two people that are popular in Fortnite. And then it was like, subscribe on the video. And it was a seven second short. And I'm like, okay, like I get, I get where you're going with this, but what is, what is the intention behind this video? Because the intention, at least for my kids, is they're chasing metrics. They're chasing followers, views, subscribers. And I told them, I'm like, guys, it's a losing game. It is a losing game to play. And I want you guys to really consider this. Create content you love to create. Don't chase the subscribers. Don't chase the views. Because if you do that, you will not create great content. You'll be creating content that's going to get people to subscribe very quickly, easy in, easy out. If someone watches a seven second short, they don't even know you're the person behind the video. There is no affinity to your brand as your channel. So my advice really is, and this is, you know, same to you as well as my kids. And this is what I live by is create content for you. No one else create content for you. Now you could say, well, if no one resonates with the content, like what's the point of doing it? Like, why would I create content? No one's like even searching for, or like, you know, etc. And I want to argue this because I know I'm not going to mention any names, but I know a few people who've started doing YouTube over the past couple of years. You probably know one of them was very famous, has millions of followers now. And I think his content from a couple of years ago was way better because when he came on YouTube, he started looking at, well, what's going to get the most views? And they started doing videos that were a little bit like, not him, not his true authentic self. And he got to the point where he's like, if I keep shooting videos like this, I'm going to like poke my eyes out because he hated the type of content he was creating. And now if you look at the content he's creating, again, I'm going to keep this anonymous so it doesn't really make a lot of sense. It's gone back to a lot of very plain, boring type of stuff, but that's in line with him and his ethos and his philosophy. And I've seen this happen quite a bit. And this is something I told our team when we started our YouTube channel seriously two years ago, which was, I don't care what happens with this channel. 
I'm not looking for new business. We're not looking for a number of subscribers by next year. I don't care what happens on the number side. All I care about is working in my vein of like, what, what do I think is the content that people, maybe like yourself, wanna see? What can I speak to from a place of authority and experience as opposed to just trend jacking and talking about whatever the latest thing is? And I told him, I'm like, I, I don't care if our videos get 100 views or a million views. I don't want a channel that has millions of subscribers that are not our perfect client. I would rather have videos that have a thousand views and the thousand people watch those videos are exactly the type of people that we want to serve. So I share that because I will not play the game of doing very stupid tactical videos because it has a lot of search volume or, you know, it's the flavor of the day because I want to poke my eyes out if I were to do that type of stuff. I mean, there's a lot of videos I could shoot about. Here's how to create a Facebook ad account. So you're going to log into Facebook ads manager and I'm going to blow my brains out because it's it's so exhausting to create that lower level of content. That's not me, right? And if you're looking for that stuff, there's plenty of people out there. My goal is to create content that I feel proud of, that I know is good, even if it's longer, you know, like, oh, it should be uh, 18 minutes or less. I'm like, fuck that. It's going to be 32 minutes because that's how long I talk for. And if you don't like it, sorry, is what it is. Now, does that mean I can't improve? No, of course. If I can say in 18 minutes, what would otherwise take me 32, better to do that. But I, I don't like, I, I don't like fitting into these, like your content must be this amount of time and you must have this in place because for every one of those stupid king black and white videos for like, this is exactly how you grow. There are countless other examples of people who are doing the complete opposite of that. And absolutely crushing it. And that's why I say it's not about the method, it's about the message. And even more than the message, it's the messenger, which means you have to get really good at expressing yourself and sharing your truth. Obviously, you know that in some of these videos, I get heated, I swear. I like call people out, I don't give a shit. Like that's, that's my style. Some people don't like that, some people love it, all right? And what I'm encouraging you to think about is create content that you get excited to create. Because if you have to set aside a couple days a month to shoot content or anything in your business and you despise it, why would you Why would you do that? Just because you want to chase getting more followers or subscribers, it's, it's ridiculous, right? So again, the first thing I would recommend not playing the game around or not chasing is this overemphasis on creating viral content, jumping on trends. Oh, what's the latest audio on Instagram? Who fucking cares? Who cares? The audio behind your video doesn't mean shit. Create good content that jives with you and eventually you will rise to the top if you're consistent with it. So second thing, social media marketing strategy I would avoid is relying on a VA to post all your content. Here's what I mean by this. So a lot of people don't want to create their content because they think it takes time. I'm like, yeah, obviously it's anything takes time. Like you got to choose your heart. Like you don't have to create content, but if you do, you got to like, you got to be focused on it. The probably the most time consuming thing I do in my business is actually the creating a content, whether it's for this channel, for social or our clients, but it's the only, it's the most important thing I do other than leading my team and, and the leadership side of things. Because if you want to be the leader of your business and a thought leader in general, then you got to share your ideas. You got to put stuff out there. Now, yeah, you don't have to take, it doesn't have to take forever, but it's going to take some time. So if you are hiring, and I've seen this happen, people will hire a VA from a third world country to post their stuff on social. And then I look at their social and it's garbage. I'm like, oh yeah, these, these cool little like images with food on them and a coat over top and a caption that could have been written by a cat for all I know. There's no soul in the message like it, it was posted but it was garbage so what's the point of posting consistently if what you're posting is garbage and you're not the one who's actually creating the message so in the video i'll share with you at the end of this i'll show you my process and how i went right back into the weeds and on a daily basis i'm the one writing the captions because when we had someone else and another process doing that in the past i'm looking at my own stuff on instagram and i'm like this is so garbage like the messaging is so bland it doesn't even sound like me i'm like what are we doing this for so we can post twice a day and, and like who cares and as soon as i went away from that and took back the control of creating the actual words myself engagement goes through the roof because it's not about posting it's about what is being posted 
Like it, again, it's the art of the content that's really important. So if you think like a VA is gonna just post on a daily basis for you and that's gonna like take it off your plate, yeah, it's gonna, they're gonna take it off your plate, but what's the point of even having the plate if no one even sees it and it engages with it? Yeah, like take it off my plate so I don't have to do it, cool. But no one cares, what's the point? And this is why I really want you to think about what I'm sharing with you here is like, if you're gonna do content, if you're gonna do anything, do it properly. I mean, I see the same thing just in a different vein on the sales front. So, you know, booking discovery calls, a person doesn't want to do the calls. So they hire a sales rep to do the calls and the sales rep completely implodes their business because the leader of the business doesn't want to do calls because they're too cool for school or whatever. They hire someone else who's shit and that person doesn't even know how to talk to prospects. And now they're not closing the one, they're losing money left, right and center and their whole business goes to, to shit, right? So I'm not saying you have to do everything in your business for the end of time, but you better, like you gotta spend the time on what's most important. And for you, most likely, if you're here watching this, it's because you're looking for an effective way to grow on social media and you gotta share your truth. No one else is gonna get into your head and extract your ideas and your exact kind of nuance to share messaging or create posts or captions that are really going to connect with people. And if you think that like a one sentence caption is gonna really make it on Instagram, it's not. Like, yeah, like people with millions of followers, they can post a picture, they could say water's good for you. Oh my God, this is amazing. Share it all over the place. But for most humans on earth who don't have that kind of clout and authority yet, you gotta put a bit of thought into what you're posting, okay? So relying and hoping that a VA or someone else in your team is just gonna take this off on your plate, it's, it's gonna be hard unless you're hiring someone who is exceptional. Now, this is obviously one of the biggest frustrations that I've had over the past couple of years, which is we've hired a number of different writers and content people and social media managers, and we've come close. We've come close with two hires out of many, but there was just, there was just like this something missing, you know? And it's, it's not to say that it's impossible, but remember I've been in business for 20 years, right? So I'm not saying that, uh, you know, if I'm being honest, maybe it's a bit of a skill deficit that I have to be able to extract my messaging so someone else can be trained up in it and do it themselves. It's a hard process, right? It's a really, really tricky process. And if you don't have clarity around your messaging to begin with, it's going to be hard for someone else to even come close to it. So you got to spend the time articulating and finding your voice. And that's just something you got to do. Now, the good news doesn't take all day. It takes me 30 minutes every day. That's it. 30 minutes, seven days a week per day. I create and pump out three posts. And those are not three posts per day, they're scheduled three days in advance. And I'll show you at the end of this video exactly what that process looks like. Okay, final thing, uh, third social media strategy I would recommend avoiding, and I kind of alluded to this already, is chasing trends instead of speaking your truth. I think the most important thing when it comes to content is understand that good content, good marketing is not about sharing what you know, it's about what you believe. And that means getting very connected to what you stand for and what you stand against. If you're someone who's faith-based or you have a political affiliation or whatever it is you wanna share about the topic you talk about, share that to the nth degree. If you swear like I do, cool. I'm not saying you have to, but just you gotta be you. If you look at my first videos on YouTube from like 2007, I've evolved, right? And so too has my content. And the trickiest part about speaking your truth is worrying about what other people are gonna say, right? The fear of being disliked is the biggest reason holding you back in any aspect of life because we're all social beings. We wanna fit into the tribe. If we don't fit into the tribe, we get ostracized at least, you know, thousands of years ago. And that, that would mean death. And that's not what we wanna have happen. Now today, obviously we're not gonna die if people disagree with us, but it's hardwired into our brain where we're looking for other people to accept us. And I've been through my own journey where I lost my hair, I regrew it, lost it again. And then I painted on fake eyebrows for two years because I was worried what other people were gonna say about me until I said, fuck it, I'm taking off this mask, it's bullshit, and I'm just gonna be myself, right? So it, it's it's much more liberating, and you don't have this burden on your shoulders of trying to like please everyone and try to like pretend you're something you're not. And people see through it anyways, right? One of the, I think one of the things that a lot of people uh, at least tell me is, I just feel like very authentic and real. And it's true, like, I mean, who you see on this video is exactly who I am in real life. Like, I'm not one of those YouTubers that's screaming every second trying to grab attention. I'm just, I'm just being myself. The videos are boring, right? I don't know if they're boring, but I'm just sitting on my desk talking the truth. That's it. Okay. Are there more exciting ways to share the content? Yeah, but that's not my, I'm not my jam. I'm not here to be Mr. Beast and do like a, a challenge of like, how long can I stand in this circle to win $10,000? That's not, that's not what I'm here to do. Okay. And I don't think that's what you're here to do. So don't worry about chasing the, the challenge trend or the, the latest audio or whatever. And certainly if there's a trend that's going on and it jives with your content, your brand, certainly talk about it. But 
at the end of the day, you want your audience to know who you are, what you stand for, how they benefit from following you. And if you're constantly just jumping on the latest trend, it's like a frog jumping from lily pad to lily pad. There's no consistency, right? So those are three social media marketing strategies I would strongly recommend avoiding. I do think they're hurting more businesses than they're doing good. So again, let's just in reverse order. It's chasing trends instead of speaking your, your truth. Two is relying on a VA or someone else to do all your posting, all your content. And third is this overemphasis for reliance on trying to go viral and chasing likes, subscribers, and views. It's, it's not a sustainable strategy and it's not the best foundation from which good content is created. Great content comes from your core. It comes from your soul. It comes from the ethos of who you are and how you share what you share. And it takes time and practice to really find that. You're not gonna hit it on the first video or the first post or the first blog article, whatever it is. It takes time and a lot of repetition to find your voice and to speak your truth. And again, don't worry about how other people respond or react, right? If they give you shit, if they give you hate, it is what it is, right? The thing is they're probably not creating, they're just talking. So create for you, don't try to please anyone else. But the cool thing is when you create for yourself, there are likely thousands of other people just like you. And because they're like you, they're gonna resonate with your message. And that's why by creating content for you that also serves the market in terms of solving problems and providing solutions, you start to attract other people that are like-minded. And that's how you start to create this raving fan base and people wanna hear from you on a consistent basis. Okay. So as I mentioned earlier, what I'd love to share with you next is how I actually create content. So this is kind of like our updated process and it might change in the future, but as of right now, this is, uh, if you click this video right over here, I'm going to walk you through our exact content process from how it starts to how it flows into everything else. And I think it's a fairly simple, straightforward process that you don't have to have an eight figure business like we do to emulate. Right? There might be some really simple things that you could look to for inspiration and model, and I think you'll find it really, really helpful.